Yeah, so the, the title of this talk is called Reference Products, A Middle Path Between Build Versus Buy for IoT. So we'll get into a little bit of, of, of what we mean by that. Um, in general, I think if you have questions, please feel free to submit them, um, as, as it says at the bottom of the slide, using the Q&A button. Um, I will generally, I'll, I'll plan to leave some time at the end to answer those questions. So as you have them, feel free to drop them into chat and we'll circle back at the end and, and get to as many of them as we can. So again, thanks for thanks for attending and hopefully hopefully this helps, uh, hopefully you find this talk interesting. Um, so just as a means of a brief introduction, my name is Will. I'm the Senior Director of Product at Particle. Um, we'll talk a little bit about Particle, uh, 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 what we are and, and, and how we support um, companies in building connected products. Um, I have a, a, a background originally in mechanical engineering um, and through my time at Particle have, have also um, gained some experience with overseas supply chain, manufacturing, open source hardware design, embedded systems, um, and, and most recently have stepped into a role leading product management here at Particle. So excited to share some of the learnings that we've uh, and that I've collected along the way and to talk with you a little bit about some of the, the new concepts that we're exploring in the world of open, uh, in, in the world of open source and open hardware. So I think I want to set the stage here by talking about the um, some of the, the best impacts that open source can have, right? I, I think from our perspective, as a company that has invested in, in open source and open hardware, I think we believe that open source is really about empowerment. It's about, uh, uh, and specifically by providing equal access. So providing equal access to powerful technologies and innovations that move industries forward, um, as well as providing control, um, empowerment through control. So essentially providing, providing individuals who are leveraging open technologies um, with the ability to, you know, to, to see into the black box, to engage with that source material and to uh, customize it and tune it to meet the needs and requirements of the problem that they're trying to solve. Um, and so just to take a step back, Particle is a, a, uh, a IoT company that helps other organizations build solutions um, that are based off of our integrated IoT platform. We'll talk about the connection there to, to uh, uh, open source in a second. But you know, at a high level, what we do is we take a lot of open standards, protocols, technologies, and have stitched them together into an integrated platform, a foundation that other companies can build on top of in order to solve problems with connected solutions. So this is a, a small example of a, of a customer of ours who's building an HVAC or air conditioning monitoring system. Um, which you can see on the bottom left, to produce insights about that air conditioner that allow them to service that machine before it breaks. And so if you think about, okay, how is Particle helping this kind of a customer to build, a, to build this solution? We're providing them with three basic things, compute, connectivity, and cloud services that, again, are built on top of open standards and in many cases are provided through, directly with open source technologies and are integrated together to provide a foundation that solves a lot of the common problems that, IoT, that, that companies who are pursuing IoT initiatives are likely to run into um, through the product development process. So specifically, how, you know, how, what, what parts of that platform are open source and, and how do we provide or, or how do we leverage uh, um, those open source technologies to create benefits for our customers. So across different layers of the stack, we're, we're providing direct access and control into the platform through open technologies. So in the hardware side, that, that's in the form of open source development kits. So if you go on our website and you buy one of our flagship uh, connectivity products or, or development kits, you can, you can look at the uh, um, and modify the open source uh, hardware designs. Um, we also provide ref open reference designs for that hardware that gives a blueprint for how customers can integrate uh, those, those modules into hardware, uh, into uh, designs of their own. We provide open source firmware, uh, most notably device OS is, a, is, is really the, the, um, the operating system that ties a lot of these layers together. Um, and is open source. We also provide open application notes and open source firmware libraries that help our customers integrate custom sensors with our hardware um, to build the kind of uh, you know, environmental monitoring and, 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 and control use cases um, that they, that they uh, uh, develop on top of our platform. 
We provide de development tools, many of which are open source, including our mobile apps, um, our, our uh, uh, professional uh, IDE, which is a, a extension of Visual Studio Code, as well as our command line tool. And finally, we also provide open source software, um, namely in the form of, of uh, SDKs, as well as a server protocol um, that customers can run at home uh, to, to um, you know, to deploy a local instance of our, our messaging uh, uh, protocol uh, on something like a Raspberry Pi. So again, by investing in all of these and providing a platform that is built on an open standards, but also delivered through these, these open source technologies that we've developed, um, we've seen a ton of benefits to our customers as a result of this. Um, increased trust because they know that uh, you know, if Particle were to simply disappear one day, they would have a lot of the key information that they need to continue to develop and iterate on the solution that they built with Particle. Ease of use, um, because again, we're providing ways for customers to, to understand how key features and functionality are implemented to, and providing them with context to know how to, to use those capabilities to create greater amounts of flexibility and differentiation with, within their products. So we have customers that, that deploy our, our technologies off the shelf just as they are. Um, we also have customers that deeply customize um, or, or change these, you know, the source of, of our key technologies to tailor them to the specific needs of their use case. So if you think about the starting point for most IoT initiatives, um, as, as a, as a you know, challenging product development process that combines and integrates layers of, of the technology stack from hardware all the way up to cloud. Generally, we see customers following two different routes. The first is DIY or build it yourself. And then the other side of the spectrum, you have buying an off the shelf solution, right? And so if you think about the differences between these approaches, um, from, from an openness perspective, obviously you're gonna find a lot more open standards and, and, and products available at the, at, uh, for the uh, build it yourself or DIY route. The, this openness allows for, in our opinion, greater expressiveness and differentiation. You're able to, to leverage technologies that best meet, meet the needs of your use case um, and you have greater control over those technologies. And so you can produce a end experience that is closer to um, you know, the, the ideal uh, you know, the ideal solution or the ideal experience you're trying to provide. The challenges are there's higher risk of failure uh, because you need a lot of deep expertise in order to not only understand how to leverage those open technologies, but in order to stitch them together in the right ways to deliver a, a connected experience that really spans all of these layers of the tech stack. If you look at the off the shelf route, on the other hand, these are built generally with closed and proprietary technologies. And while they may facilitate really rapid deployment, they don't have a lot of the benefits of, of the, the, you know, of, of open technologies. They provide limited ownership and control. And frankly, there aren't always off the shelf solutions available for every kind of problem that um, we see our customers trying to solve with, with uh, IoT. And so again, even though these open standards exist, we see that most uh, organizations aren't equipped to be successful with the DIY route in IoT. And I think that's broadly true, but I think it's especially true for IoT. And, and the reason for that is that IoT, as I mentioned before, really requires a breadth of integration um, and a breadth of technology and orchestration that is greater than, than, than uh, you know, almost any other product out there. Um, you can see that from the hardware and device side all the way through to the cloud side, in order to successfully deliver on even basic uh, connected experiences like an over-the-air firmware update, you really have to consider a whole, and be an expert in a whole set of different, uh, um, uh, you know, of different sub areas and sub technologies um, and domains that uh, you have to then bring together to be successful in delivering on even a basic connected product. And so, again, even though our, there are open standards that exist to, to support uh, companies who are developing across almost all of these areas, I think what we see is that most IoT initiatives fail on, on the DIY route. Um, this is, uh, this is a, a uh, report that was produced by Cisco. Um, and, and there are other reports that, you know, between 75 and 80% that, that, that are consistent. And, and a lot of the reasons for that are because of long completion times, poor quality of data, lack of expertise, and integration challenges that essentially mean that 
companies weren't successful in being able to build a solution based off of the tools that were available on market, even though, again, there are open standards available for a lot of the key components that you need um, in isolation. And so I think that's where a, a platform like Particle has attempted to take all of the great and all the benefits and principles of openness um, and provide a easier path to market for, the co for companies that aren't in a position to build their own solutions from scratch. And so an integrated platform like Particles, we, we have a mix of open source and proprietary solutions, right? I think as I, we touched on earlier, we try to provide openness wherever possible because we really believe that it's in the best interest of our customers and helps them succeed, which helps us succeed. Um, so some of the benefits of that are we can provide a quicker time to market with a much lower maintenance burden, integration and maintenance burden. Um, but of course, there are some constraints that make it unsuitable for, for certain applications. Um, and so, again, I think this is the approach that Particle has tried to take since, our, uh, since we, were, we were created in 2013, is this mix of taking open technologies but packaging them in a way that allow organizations to leverage and apply them more successfully while still maintaining all of the degrees of control um, that, that, that come with, uh, with open technologies. And I think we've seen success with that approach, right? So this open approach has helped make IoT more accessible to non-technologists. And I think when I say non-technologists, I mean, um, you know, uh, uh, scientists. So we, we work with a lot of organizations where um, you know, that require an incredible amount of very specific scientific knowledge, um, whether it's in, you know, micro measurements of plants so that you can compare how different soil and oxygen conditions um, lead to improved or, or, or worse plant growth, to detecting methane emissions. Um, we've worked with startups, again, that, are, that have very limited resources and expertise and are focused on creating value in very specific areas. Um, and, and also we've worked with four good company organizations who are really, who are experts in the kinds of social problems that they're orienting to solve um, and, and not necessarily experts in IoT tech. And we've been uh, with our platform able to help these kinds of organizations succeed in building connected solutions to the problems um, that they're, the most important problems that they're trying to solve whether again, it's optimizing plant growth or reducing the toxic fumes in, in cook stoves or, or helping to prevent flooding uh, as a result of uh, climate change. Um, however, open source and, and openness alone does not guarantee accessibility. And I think even with this integrated approach, there are constraints um, and examples of that. Professional implementation services can routinely exceed $200,000. So building hardware is expensive. And even if we provide an open source hardware design, that doesn't necessarily mean that our customers will have the skills and expertise to know how to implement those designs in the most effective way possible in a way that it achieves their goals. And so we provide professional services to, to support them with that. But again, those services can, can be expensive and many organizations, especially smaller ones, aren't in a position to be able to apply those kinds of resources even to just to implement open technologies. Um, secondly, lack of expertise limits engagement with open components. So I mentioned device OS, it's, it's, it's one of the most valuable parts of our entire platform and it's entirely open source. Um, you know, it's also, it's also very complicated. It's also provides a, it, it's, it has an incredible amount of depth, um, a, a, you know, growing and increasingly complicated architecture. And so even individuals who have the skills and expertise to, who, you know, who have embedded skills, you know, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that those skills can translate into, into a, an ability to deeply, uh, uh, you know, engage with a source a repository that has, you know, that has hundreds of thousands of, line of lines of code in it. Um, and finally, even with help, implementation mistakes cost time and money. And so even with the abstractions that we built into our platform, we still see uh, customers who make you know, rookie errors who, who design themselves into boxes and prevent themselves from achieving their goals because they didn't have the expertise required to build on top of the platform, uh, um, even at the, the, the starting point that we provided to them. And so I think what we've started to reflect on as an organization is that, you know, coming back to this idea of empowerment, if you really want to empower organizations, you have to make open technologies accessible 
Um, and so what we've started to think about is the consumption model for open technology. How do customers and, and organizations leverage open technology in order to achieve their goals. I think what we believe is that the consumption model for open technology must also be flexible enough to scale with users level of expertise. Um, and what I mean by that is, is in a lot of cases, we found that simply providing the blueprints, the open source technology is not sufficient to actually support organizations in achieving their goals. And so as a result, we've started to invest in a new kind of a new delivery uh, vehicle, a new, a new kind of packaging for our open source and open technologies, which we're calling reference products. So I wanna talk a little bit about what a reference product is and how we're trying to use reference products to scale the interface for consuming our open platform to meet the levels of expertise of our customers. So our first reference product is what we call the tracking system. So you know, to take a step back, we have a lot of customers, even before we launched this reference product, who are already building tracking, asset tracking solutions on top of the Particle platform. Um, and they were building those solutions because they wanted, you know, they had highly, they wanted to create highly differentiated um, products. Uh, they wanted to integrate tracking into existing product services or vehicles, or they wanted to, to, to you know, build um, tracking solutions that help them increase the operational efficiency of their business. So on the left, left, you can see the tracker SOM. It's, it's, a, um, it's a hardware component, a lot like our other hardware components that allows someone that provides all of the critical IoT embedded systems necessary that you can build an IoT product around. Um, and so this represents a more traditional approach for Particle, right? It's, it's to say, hey, we're, we're giving you an advanced starting point by taking this complicated tracking system and giving you all of the hardware guts that you need to get started, a microcontroller, cellular connectivity, GPS, um, some, some motion detection, right? And we're packaging that and providing it to you so you can build a product around it. Um, but like we said, what we found is that that approach isn't as always as accessible as, as, uh, as customers need it to be. And so for that, we, we produced our first reference product, Tracker One, which essentially takes that technology and embeds it within an open reference design with, that's a finished enclosure that's fully certified and is built um, with, to, be, to, to, to be able to be deployed by organizations who don't have the same depth of expertise, but still provide those organizations with the same degrees of flexibility, the same amount of openness, the same amount of control and uh, expressiveness that we bake into our platform broadly. Finally, we've paired both of those pieces of hardware with a new kind of, uh, a, new, a new set of software capabilities that we're calling tracking services, which again are aimed at, at, at solving a subset of the problems that our customers need help so, uh, uh, solving things like being able to, to store geolocation data securely, being able to visualize location on a map, being able to provide basic device management, but it has been designed in a way such that while it can work off the shelf, we've created these axes that allow more advanced customers to engage at different levels of depth with this software in an open way so that the, the amount of customization um, can map to the, the individual customer's level of expertise and ability to express um, the, the differentiation that, they, that they're that they trying to build into their products. So we'll talk a lot more about what that actually looks like here in just a second. Um, when we talk about providing different consumption models with reference products, this is an illustration. So you can see at the bottom, the two gray boxes, these are two, these, this is the basic way that our, our platform has worked for the last eight years. Essentially, we're built on an open source foundation that allows for very deep customization by experts who know how to leverage that technology. We're then providing platform abstraction that allows for, for a simplified development process and assisted development. So we're providing hardware blocks, SDKs, basic APIs, and out-of-box capabilities like OTA that allow customers to get critical functionality without having to build it themselves. With our reference products, we're adding two new layers on top of that open foundation that are meant to make it easier 
for different organizations to leverage that platform. So specifically, we've introduced an idea of configurable features, this idea that we can provide a, a capability like how often do you want the tracker to report its location? And then provide our customers with a way without engaging in the source code to be able to customize that behavior through the software services. Um, and then finally, you know, we, with Tracker One, we've really focused on providing smart out of box defaults that allow for the simplest form of, of uh, consumption, which is plug and play. So, again, um, with the tracking system, we're providing out of box this plug and play experience, but providing channels that allow customers to dig down into layers of the, of the solution to, to, to customize those layers of openness um, where they have the abilities and skills to, to um, express uh, the, the kind of differentiation that they're looking to achieve. So let's, this is all very hypothetical, right? And so I wanna use some of these specific examples to, to, um, to drive home how we're thinking about this new notion of reference products. So let's look at hardware, right? So at the hardware layer, like I said, a beginner can simply deploy the product off the shelf. An intermediate user, um, because the, the, uh, uh, the solution is open source, um, customers are able to, you know, to, to customize that reference design, to do things like change the shape of the enclosure, move systems around or eliminate systems to make it smaller um, and fabricate their own, uh, you know, their own designs based off of that reference design where we're still providing a lot of the key systems, but they're able to, to uh, modify the design as needed to, to more specifically match the needs of their use case. And then finally, an advanced user could simply buy that core hardware component, the SOM, and integrate it into a fully custom vehicle, like a, like a connected scooter or a bike, right? Um, so that they could, if you do have a you know, great amount of depth, you can engage all the way at the bottom layer and you know, work closer to the foundation to, to you know, provide the degrees of flexibility that you need to build a very highly differentiated solution. Right, so same, really same basic product, just being engaged with at three different levels. Similarly, if we look at, okay, you might wanna add a sensor to your tracking solution, right? How would you do that? So again, for beginners with that open hardware design, one of the things we're doing is providing a reference for how you can use track location, movement and temperature with built-in sensors. And so out of the box, our software allows you to do things like monitor the temperature um, for an application like cold chain, right? Where you're transporting goods that need to be stored. Um, so you wanna know, yeah, where the device or where the, where the truck is, but also you wanna have the confidence of knowing the temperature uh, of the food truck, you know, of the truck over time so that you can demonstrate um, for, for auditing reasons or just for safety reasons that the, you know, the food or, or the, the medicine or whatever it is, the blood samples are stored at the appropriate locate at the appropriate temperature. Um, if you're an intermediate, you're probably looking to add your own sensors, right? So we've, we've in the hardware design thought about how can customers do that? How can customers, um, you know, how can we provide an open interface to customers that allows them to customize this, this out-of-box solution? And so we've, we've built a uh, expansion port that that's, we call the M8 port, which is really just a non-creative name for, for the name of, of that kind of a connector. <laughs> um, but it provides a standard set of interfaces for power like CAN, um, for, for connecting additional sensors and for powering the device or other, other devices um, that customers can engage with in a, in a structured, constrained uh, and abstracted way that allows them to get some amount of customization without having to go all the way to the bottom layer. And finally, again, we're providing unlimited sensor configuration. If you want to build your own thing, there are, there's you know, tons of GPIO available for you to build your own custom circuit board based off of the, the reference design and implement it that way. Last example I'll use is about device management and configuration of these devices, right? So one of the things I mentioned is, you know, we're providing ways for customers to change the behavior of their devices. And, um, you know, at the, at the most simple level, what does that look like? Just choosing from a list of smart defaults, right? So if you're, you're tracking a logistics, uh, you know, a package delivery versus shared vehicles or service vehicles, there might be a trade-off between battery life and the, the granularity of location that, 
that you need in order to, uh, you know, in order to, to solve the problem that you're trying to solve. Um, for intermediates, that looks like, okay, we're providing a, a way for you to dig into those smart defaults and customize individual components around how often it reports, when it reports, and, and what feedback it's providing physically through, through its physical interfaces like the RGB LED. So you can create and customize behavior still without writing or, or, or publishing code to the device. And then finally, of course, if, if you're an advanced user, you can create you know, deep, deeply customized behavior by engaging, um, uh, by tying the sensors with custom firmware uh, and, and using our configuration services with custom variables that you've introduced in order to get the exact kind of behavior that you want. So what does this all mean, right? We're providing these different axes, these different ways and depths for people to engage with this product, which we think of again as really one product, but that has different consumption interfaces across different elements in, uh, of the product to meet the needs of our users, right? And so I use this as an example to say, okay, if you're, if you're creating a startup, uh, or you know, micro mobility startup, or you're tracking the location of an ambulance um, with with in vehicle displays for collision prevention, or you're a logistics provider, right? Maybe you're a software systems integrator and you're creating uh, route optimization software that works with pre configured hardware for deliveries. These are all potential customers of this product, again, but they have very different levels of expertise and needs, and so. By building on top of the open nature of the, of the platform and by packaging that openness into a reference product, what we've done is given different kinds of customers abilities to engage at different levels of depth across the technology stack to help them be more successful in deploying a product uh, that, again, gives them the, the flexibility that they want to build a highly differentiated solution. So, you know, this is very new for us. We've just started experimenting with this idea of open, of open uh, reference products as a way to help make our open technologies more accessible to a broader set of customers. But I, we've seen really encouraging results. So I mentioned we've had a lot of asset tracker customers, asset tracking customers historically at Particle. And what we're seeing is about one third of new customers are choosing to deploy with Tracker One, which again is our ready to go, totally finished, off the shelf, um, sort of product, which to us means that when given the choice, they would rather, uh, you know, deploy their expertise on on um, on issues related to software or customization of of, of uh, behavior as opposed to as opposed to engaging deeply with the uh, you know with the hardware and the embedded design process, and so you know. Part of the reasons they're choosing to do so, again, are decreased expertise required in hardware. It provides them with a faster time to market because they don't have to become experts in hardware or in, in supply chain. And it also lowers the cost of customizations that they do want to do. So we do have customers who are, who are interested in modifying our open design. Um, and whether they're doing it themselves or working with us to do it, they're able to do so a lot more uh, inexpensively, right? We're, we're lowering that threshold and the cost of entry to building highly customized traffic tracking solutions. And even for customers who are still engaging deeply with the SOM, right, with the, with the, um, with the sort of integrated solution that you build a product around, we're also still seeing benefits from an accessibility standpoint. We're seeing that, that customers are saving tens of thousands of dollars on professional services, that they're able to save money overall because um, we're able to provide what they need in a more compact and cost optimized package. And they're also getting to market faster um, than, than they would be otherwise, because we're saving, even, even when working with professional services, because we're saving them cycles in the design process. Um, and, and we're reducing the amount of deep hardware customization work that's required. So we, if we come back to this model, we sort of think of these reference products as, as an in-between in-between. Um, between an integrated platform approach and an off-the-shelf approach, where you know we're taking all of the open, extensible frameworks that that are in our platform and packaging them in a way that allows customer that reduces the barrier to engaging with those technologies. 
Um, it provides even faster time to market uh, with, with still meaningful customization that allows you to, to you know, do quick configurations on the fly, if that's all you need, but still provides you the, the full ability to dive into the source code um, or even build your own versions of the solutions off of our own hardware and, and firmware reference designs if you need to. Um, and, uh, you know, I think if there's a con here, it's, it's that, you know, if you're, if you're buying or utilizing a reference product, then, you know, some of the core functionality, that quality is going to be determined by the vendor, right? So the question is, do you trust who you're buying this reference product from to solve and, and provide abstraction around some of the core functionality like tracking GPS location, right? Um, that that uh, is, a, is, is likely a, a, an important and core part of the functionality of your product. Um, but for a lot of customers, we've seen again success here, and we've seen um, a lot of uh, a, a lot of positive engagement with how we package the openness of our platform in these kinds of reference products. So, you know, if there's any summary, I think what we're learning at Particle through our journey in open hardware is that um, thinking about how technologies are consumed. Um, not just whether they're open or not is really important. And that providing these kinds of flexible consumption models can increase the reach and the impact of open technology. Um, I think we've seen that reference products, they provide opportunities to create new kinds of consumption models that can better scale to meet users where they are. Um, and finally, you know, we've personally found that our first reference product has increased the accessibility of our platform by reducing the cost and expertise required to deliver it's specifically on these kinds of asset tracking solutions. So, um, you know, I hope that that uh, this concept of open products, you know, prompts you to think about okay, the the ways that we can better package open technologies to make them more accessible to the users that are best suited to utilize them, so that um, they they increase the amount of impact that they're able to create in the real world. Um, so. Uh, you know, just as a, as a final note, we do have a booth here in the virtual exhibit hall. Um, and we'll be providing uh, uh, special discount codes to folks who stop by. Um, so, so uh, you know, please, please consider doing so if, if you want to learn more about Particle or, or, or learn more about our reference products. And finally, I'd, I'd uh, uh, you know, with that, want to conclude the talk and, and invite anybody to who has questions to enter them below. Um, and we'll utilize the last, uh, I think we have about, you know, 12 minutes or so to answer questions that you all have about Particle, about uh, open source, uh, the ways that we use open source, or about this new concept of reference products that we're building um, out. Thank you, Will, so much. That was a great talk. OK, everybody, if you can utilize the chat window to put any questions in, that would be fantastic. So, Will, how long have you been with Particle? Um, I've been with Particle for um, for about coming up on eight years now. Um, we, we were originally founded in uh, twenty late twenty twelve, um, and I joined in early twenty thirteen. So, I've had the opportunity to see us grow and change from a you know originally a connected light socket company called Spark. Um, this is sort of before Philips Hue and and products like LifeX existed. Um, now to a company really focused on, on, you know, utilizing what we learned from the process of building a connected product to help other companies do the same thing. Nice. That's really exciting. Where did you work at before Particle? Uh, before Particle, you know, had a, had a, you know, um, a series of, of uh, sort of, you know, shorter term roles as I was trying to figure out exactly where my, my passion laid. I, I mentioned I had a background in mechanical engineering. And so, um, you know, some of the earliest roles that I had were in industrial design and design engineering. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, re really thought I had a, a future and career in designing, you know, sexy, you know, sexy consumer products. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, um, but, uh, you know, I think it's for the best. This is, this has been a, a fantastic ride. And, um, and, uh, I think I found a lot more success here than I would have had sitting behind a desk doing SolidWorks all day anyway, so. Oh, I'm sure that doesn't appeal to me at all, but I know um, a lot of people love that career path. Now I think Particles, it sounds like a really great fit for you. Yeah. Tom, thanks for your comment. We're glad to see that Will has got your wheels turning. Yeah.
Um, so yeah, I see the first question here, which is, um, you know, I'll answer live, which is, does Particle offer the reference implementations already manufactured? So yes, and and really, you know, what I when I mentioned, uh, let me see if I can backtrack here. Um, you know, when I mentioned uh, Tracker One, right, as this this uh, reference product, um, that's exactly right. This reference this reference implementation is a um, is available to buy off the shelf. So we have tons of customers who take this open source design and simply say, you know, yep, this meets my needs, this meets my requirements. So, you know, I'm happy to, I'm happy to buy this off the shelf uh, and deploy it as is. It's open, so I know if I need to or want to in the future, I can customize it. Um, but, uh, you know, but if it meets the needs of your use case, um, or you don't have the skills to customize, then yeah, you're you're um, more than able to simply just buy and deploy off the shelf without needing to uh, without needing to go through the process of becoming an expert in uh, manufacturing. So the the a second question says it looks like you can only use particle if you pay uh, per month per device. So um, our so so if you're using our our uh, you know our core cloud software services. Um, which is to say, if you're using our our hosted offering, then we're providing these services, uh, you know, for a fee, right? This is sort of the 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 uh, monetization model of of Particle as an IoT company, right? We provide that hosting and that infrastructure management so that um, customers don't have to manage it themselves as a service. However, uh, you know, like I said. All of our hardware products are open, and so if you buy a piece of uh, particle hardware, um, you can reprogram that hardware down to the source. Um, and so, if you want to, you know, to leverage our hardware, take our reference design, change it, modify it, um, deploy it in a different way, um, there's nothing preventing you from doing that. So, um, like I said, our, our hardware uh, and, and device to us is provided, you know, uh, open source as is. And if uh, you, you know, most of our customers choose to work with us because they don't want and pay us because they don't want to deal with the burden of, of managing these kinds of, uh, um, you know, software services on their own. But like I said, if, if you're, if you're an individual who wants to leverage that hardware in a different way, there's, there's absolutely nothing um, stopping you from doing so. Awesome. Thank you, Will. Anybody else out there with a question? Um, I see I see a question that's just in the, the general chat. Um, it says, what is the dev platform? Um, so, you know, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll go back to the um, to the one of the earlier slides that I provided here, right? So um, we are we, we provide customers with a, a set of development tools that make it easier to build with the open components that we provided. So specifically, our device OS provides firmware abstraction. So you can run any you know C C code on our devices, but what we provide with device OS is layers of abstraction that allow you to write, you know, in wiring or Arduino, if that's uh, which are a lot of our customers are more familiar with, and to leverage that abstraction to create simple applications um, without having to engage with the low-level, you know, hardware peripherals, for example. So that's sort of the base of our development model is device OS and the abstraction that's built in. Now, again, device OS is open source. And so you can sort of see what those abstractions look like and engage at deeper levels if you'd like. Um, on the development tool side, we provide a set of open source tools, a cloud compilation service that you can utilize, or you can download our tool chain and compile locally. Um, we provide our command line tool, which is open source and allows for you to build, you know, custom scripts that utilize um, the, our, our CLI to, to, you know, manage your device flash, the device, uh, you know, et cetera, locally. Um, and we also provide a Visual Studio Code extension, which is, uh, you know, also open that um, allows you to utilize Visual Studio Code um, in a way that can tightly integrate the open firmware libraries and device OS and development model that we've built. Um, now, that being said, um, that being said, uh, you know, if you, uh, want you can also leverage your own development tools um, and and you know utilize 
you know, our, our compilation service. If, if you want to utilize our OTA flashing services, you want to, you can, you can sort of utilize pieces that you want and, and um, use your own, you know, own development uh, um, stack or, or tool chain where, um, where you prefer it. So uh, last question there um, from Mark is, I assume you have something like an, the Arduino IDE. Yes, so we do provide, like I said, um, the Visual Studio Code extension and the command line tool as, uh, as two development environments. We also provide a web-based IDE, um, which is you know, fully browser-based and is probably most comparable to a simplified Arduino IDE that you can, uh, that you can uh, leverage as well for, for beginners. And again, that's cloud hosted, so you don't have to deal with all the issues of, of uh, you know, tool chain management, et cetera. Um, and then finally, is there a source you recommend on getting started? So there's actually a, um, um, you know, we have a set of tutorials on our website. If you go to docs.particle.io, that allow you to, um, uh, you know, get started and learn about the platform. Also recommend, you know, buying a, a development kit. Um, you know, you can purchase them for as little as, you know, $19 on our website. And that's also a great way to, to you know, follow those tutorials. Um, but uh, if you're interested in pure content, yes, we do have a YouTube channel that has a bunch of getting started videos. We also have, uh, I think there's also a, a, a book that was uh, um, published on getting started with the, with the Photon, which was one of our previous uh, uh, Wi-Fi products that also provides a good way to, uh, if you want a real sort of long form guided get to know the platform provides a way to uh, better understand the capabilities of, of Particle. And of course, I'd be remiss in saying, you know, if you have any other questions as well, there are folks um, at, at the Particle team who are who are here to help, whether that's in, you know, in, in uh, we, we have a, a, an organization that can help you understand how to leverage Particle to scale, if that's something you're interested in, um, or if you have more technical questions, we also have a support uh, a support line that does, you know, email Q and A, and then really active community forum at community.particle.io that can provide you with uh, answers to questions. Um, that community has been active since, you know, 2013, and is is one of the largest and and, and most helpful in the entire IoT industry. So, um, a great resource if you want to ask uh, or better understand um, Particle, either, you know, uh, uh, from you know, just based off of the interest you have, um, or if you're deep in the weeds of a technical challenge and, and want guidance or tips. All right, it looks like we probably have time for about one more question if anybody has one out there. And yeah, I mean, Particle's a great organization. Riot's so happy that they're part of our ecosystem. We love having you guys come in and give lunch and learns and talks at some of our events. So everybody check them out if you haven't already. And let, just last comment here. Uh, oh, it's, okay, here we go. How does Particle test its devices for long-term deployments? Uh, good question. So one of the things that we've been, um, one of the major product initiatives that we announced earlier this year that we're almost ready to roll out is, is, a, um, is a new sort of base for our device OS, device OS which is an, an LTS release branch. Uh, LTS stands for, you know, uh, long-term support. Um, it's a really common model for, you know, uh, you know, companies like Ubuntu, right, have, uh, or, or Node.js have, have LTS release branches that are intended to provide a, a sort of long-term, unchanging, stable foundation for uh, long-term deployments. And so um, we've been rebuilding our, um, you know, because because uh, the customers who deploy with Particle need those devices to operate reliably in the field for long periods of time. Um, we've, we've developed this LTS branch as a way to create a unchanging foundation and, and to be able to pursue feature development in a separate branch. Um, so with, with um, our LTS branches, we do a lot of deep testing um, you know, that, that leverages sort of a variety of techniques um, that span from you know, uh, um, you know, just uh, integrated testing in the, you know, in the in the um, source itself, to um, you know, proactive QA, to to uh, um, you know, customer uh, uh, beta and and testing with uh, you know devices in our uh, uh, you know our customers' devices in our labs, um, upgrade downgrade testing, over the air firmware testing. Um, so I think. With, with these new LTS uh, branch, we've really increased the, the volume of testing that we provide um, to, to really ensure that we're providing a stable foundation for these applications that need to last in the field for, for you know, in some cases, 10 years or more. <laughs> 